Australia, 1927, the halcyon days. As early as 1830, a trend had begun that would shape the Australian lifestyle and the image of Australians all over the world. With their bodies covered from neck to knee, it mattered not what type of body flourished beneath. But as society became more relaxed, so the costumes became smaller. And smaller. Today, it's hard to believe the near riot that was caused when the bikini made its first appearance. The male counterpart into the gymnasium. Women's bodybuilding had begun. No one ever imagined a woman even being strong. It was incomprehensible that a female could ever attain the muscular proportions of a man. But results were phenomenal. And in 1977, a women's federation of bodybuilding was formed which injected a new lease of life into the sport. Women competitors, like the men, would be compared, muscle for muscle. And here, backstage at the Australian Championships, the best in Australia prepare to be judged. Pam Wilkins, 25 years old, one of the pioneers, best in Australia, Miss South Pacific, a strong contender for the title. I like being involved in the fitness field, I like teaching classes and talking with people about fitness and working around a gym. I'm not a person that likes going out a lot. I like my sleep. <laughs> I like early nights. <laughs> Mainly ever since I really started bodybuilding, I've sort of quietened down a lot. I know you can, you can do just unbelievable things with, with your body through weights, you know, you can sort of like sculpture your body to what you want if you think you need more chest development or arms, shoulders, back. Just with the right weights, with the right, right program, you can sort of have the nice V shape, the nice thin waist, and, uh, nice toned legs and bottom and stomach and all the rest of it. <laughs> Why do I want to this? Um, probably more confidence in myself. I haven't really got a lot of confidence. I find it um, I'm not a, a real showy person. That's why I thought when I first went up on stage I wouldn't be able to, to do that sort of thing. But once you're up there, and plus with the crowd cheering and whistling and egging you on, you sort of, you get more confidence that way. Yes, yes I'm confident. I feel really nervous, <laughs> naturally. I think most people feel nervous because you're not sure what to expect. Well, I haven't been in that many contests, so um, I'm not really experienced in it yet. But um, my new posing routine is something 
I had it done before. And this is sort of a lot more muscle, but showing the femininity side of it too. In 1980, a contest was created to decide the most beautifully built body in the world. She would be called Miss Olympia. It was won by 26-year-old Rachel McLeish. As an ambassador for the sport, McLeish was so completely feminine, she astounded critics who had looked upon bodybuilding as a man's sport. Soon, women all over the world began to take notice. I took ballet lessons for 10 years prior to any kind of weight training activity, and I had great looking legs. But my upper body lacked in shape and development and aesthetic beauty, simply because there was no exercise to that part of my body. And basically, I started weight training because I wanted to proportion out my body. I wanted for my upper body to look as good as my lower body. Ballerinas have fantastic looking legs, midsections, but their upper bodies, for the most part, are generally very spindly looking, and I was one of them. I found that weight training gave me the shape and the roundness to my shoulders that I desired. Rachel has a male training partner and spends, on an average, an hour and a half to two hours in the gym per training session. This is the time I spend shaping my body, putting weight resistance against my muscles in order for them to take on the shape um, that I want them to have. I was born a woman. I have no desires to look like a man, and no activity is going to dictate the way I look. I can train as hard as I want. I bust my buns in the gym, and I don't look like a man. Or do I? Years ago, the presence of women in a gymnasium was frowned upon. These sweat boxes were the lair of the male. Now, in the thousands of gymnasiums spread throughout the country, women on an average make up two thirds of the membership, and in some, as many as 90% are women. The fitness industry is one of the fastest growing in the world and has transformed these traditional meeting places into glossy clubs where one meets for an aerobic workout or a healthy lunch. This is not an exhibition from Sydney's latest art sensation, but is in fact the opening of yet another fitness center. This body is a result of aerobics. The fitness business has come a long way. Women's bodybuilding takes it one step further. There are over 100 magazines catering specifically to fans of bodybuilding. The largest is Joe Weider's Muscle and Fitness, which published in six languages, has a circulation of 1.7 million. 
Through these publications, a professional bodybuilder can market everything from clothing to food supplements. It is estimated a bodybuilder in the Olympian League could earn up to a quarter of a million dollars a year. But the Olympian stage is a long way from the remote gymnasiums of Australia. An aspiring Australian athlete must first win local and state heats and then the Australian championships.
We're now going to call forward... Uh... Beth Lopez, 28 years of age, is a nursing sister at Geelong Public Hospital. I chose bodybuilding initially because I was a dancer and I felt I needed strength, mainly in my legs. I had thin legs and no strength at all. Uh, I did a lot of classical, a lot of jazz ballet, so I decided to start working with weights and that led on to competition bodybuilding. Now competition bodybuilding comes first and I do dance just to help with my bodybuilding. Beth also owns and operates her own gymnasium and with her vital personality has a strong influence over aspiring bodybuilders. A major part of the sport is posing, presenting the body so as to best display the various muscle groups. Dedicated bodybuilders rehearse at least an hour a day for six to eight weeks prior to competition, in much the same way as a tennis player spends hours developing her backhand or a footballer perfecting his game. Yet when these sportswomen devote their time striving to achieve physical perfection, they are usually criticized. Uh, well, it might be all right for the young people, but uh, I don't like muscles on women. Um, I think when women's bodybuilding is um, it's not very nice. Women are supposed to look feminine. If they're women that are totally ignorant of the sport, I sit them down and try and explain that bodybuilding is well, what it is. It's graceful, toning the whole body, feeling physically fit, mentally fit, because if you're physically strong, you've got a different inner strength than you've ever had before. When I'm on stage posing, I feel absolutely incredible. I love the feel of strength and grace, femininity, and being able to use my dance talent all in one. And it's just an incredible feeling. I've never ever experienced anything like I have posing on stage. One of the teachers at Ocean Grove High School in Victoria does not have the appearance of the traditional school mom. She is Wendy Matheson. A lot of female athletes um, maybe reach their peak late teens or over the hill at 25. Uh, I started bodybuilding when I was 30 
I'm 31 now, um, coming up to my 32nd birthday, and I hope to be even in better shape when I'm 32. Not all the students know that I, do, I am a bodybuilder uh, and a competitive bodybuilder. Some of them actually go to the same gym that I train at, so they see me there. Oh, oh, actually, one of my ex-students did come to a contest in Geelong, which I won, and he was yelling at a few comments <laughs> in the audience, but um, they were complimentary, so that was all right. <laughs> It was a bit embarrassing at the time. When I'm posing, it's exciting, um, exhilarating, it's fun. Um, I really enjoy it, it gives me a buzz. I love it. I think it's really good how they um, involve themselves in other activities and they really want to take care of themselves so they look nice and respectable. I'd be really embarrassed if I had, uh, I was muscly and I went to the beach in a bikini with muscles all bulging out everywhere. I think it'd be horrible. <laughs> I do get a few snide comments behind the back as I walk around the school and kids, you know, make fun of me. Just because she's a teacher it doesn't mean that she just can't make herself look nice. Miss Madison's really beautiful. She's gorgeous. I think Miss Matheson really looks good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wendy Matheson is the state title holder of Victoria and is competing in the over 52 kilogram or heavyweight division. It's possibly hard to believe that a guest viola player with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra is also the most massive female bodybuilder in Australia. Yes, this is the same girl, Joy Dobson. Her trainer is a Svengali-like character who won the Mr. World in 1964. He is Austrian Helmut Czernik. Joy is by far the best bodybuilder in Australia, woman's bodybuilder. She is so advanced that at this stage, Joy will be the only worthy representative 
at the World Championship, and she would look very good even in the Miss Olympia lineup. Many people believe bodybuilders have no strength, that their muscles are merely pumped up. Joy puts pay to that theory as today she attempts a state powerlifting record. I don't really think there's anything unfeminine about Choi. Many things uh, that Choi does are so particularly feminine. Uh, if something hurts, uh, she will cry. And uh, I mean, no man ever would cry just because they kick their toe or they scratch themselves. Um, there are traits about her that suggest that she is, in fact, a very, very sensitive. Joy freely admits that bodybuilding has made an incredible change in her life. My nervous energy has gone right down. I'm able to control pretty well what I'm doing without getting uh, being in a flustered state most of the time. Things like nail biting, ripping out hair, all those sidelines of <laughs> self-destruction. Conan and the Amazon is one of the hottest acts on Sydney's nightclub circuit. They have in fact broken all records by performing 84 shows in one week. Well, basically, we got into nightclub work because we figured that it was an excellent way of making money. People were saying bodybuilders can't do anything. They're muscle-bound and they have problems expressing themselves and all that. And uh, we figured while well, we showed the world that uh, bodybuilders indeed can do very well. Ever since I first met Joy, I figured that she had very unusual abilities for a woman that she had an uncanny strength and um, the kind of determination that I encountered many years ago in Arnold Schwarzenegger, that is um, a persistence, a drive to succeed, to get to the top. Round one, of course, is the relaxed round, so I'd like all ladies to totally relax. Arms at your side, legs straight on, on the floor, please. Feet together. Totally relaxed, please.
Quarter turn to the right. Feet flat on the ground, please. This is the relaxed round and arms should be at your sides and feet should always be relaxed. And if girls keep on disobeying the rules, they will lose points. So I'm going to tell you one last time that feet will have to stay down flat. Number 36, could you just turn slightly around? Thank you. Corner turn to the right. Corner turn to the right. Corner turn to the right. Thirty-six come forward, thirty-one come forward towards this end of the stage, please. One step down, go. Thirty-four, could you please join the ladies at the front? Turn right to the rear. Thank you, ladies. Number 36, could you just turn slightly around? Thank you. Gail Laurie, 25 years old, New South Wales state title holder, a former Miss Australia, Miss South Pacific, and Australian Women's Bodybuilder of the Year. started training with weights I got to looking at a few magazines and uh, I liked the way that the women looked they looked toned they looked healthy they had a good general appearance and they they weren't stupid like people make bodybuilders out to be they had a lot of intelligence and they put it to a lot of good use it's a very very hard sport I mean people don't understand how much we actually put into it and it takes a lot of self-discipline Well, I suppose it is a feeling of strength and power. Um, I know that now I'm a lot stronger than a lot of men around the place. I'm training twice a day for an hour and a half each time. I'm doing about two hours of aerobics every day. I'm spending an hour in the solarium. I've got to practice my posing for an hour. I've got to worry about things like getting my bikini, getting everything down to the finest detail. It's a full-time thing. A lot of people say she's too big and I wouldn't want to look like that and that's usual, usually the general attitude that I get but um, I mean you look at a lot of the women on the beaches they're not ashamed to take off their clothes and they've got fat bodies and the same with men. Men can walk around with shorts and they've got obese stomachs and beer guts and things like this and if a male bodybuilder or a female bodybuilder walks around with a bikini or a pair of shorts on people knock them but um, they don't realize how much work they've put into achieving that body and they, they should admire that body. Yeah. Generally it's a, a jealousy thing and that's what I put it down to. They look too much like men because you know now that men are looking like women women looking like men it's just becoming a bit weird so 
I don't think it looks really nice at all. But I think the elite few who take up competitive bodybuilding will teach the rest of the world what a human being can do to shape and form the body. If it wasn't for us, no one would ever know what a Grecian god <laughs> would have ever looked like. And now I'm very proud of my body and I'll wear short dresses and shorts and things that normally I wouldn't wear. And I feel proud of it and a lot of guys notice it. I think they appreciate it. hope so. <laughs> Naturally, Gail cannot retain this extraordinary look all year round. That's why it's so important to inform people about extreme muscularity because so many people are turned off by the women, the muscular women they see on stage. They say, oh, I don't want to look like that. And I don't blame them. See, we don't look like that or they don't look like that, you know, 365 days a year. They achieve that look very, very temporarily. But um, you take a woman with a basic structure of, say, a man broad shoulders, narrow hips. You put that body type in a gym, and what's going to happen? She's going to enhance the way she already looks. But you take your average woman with average shoulders, average waist, and average hips, the way 99.9% .9 of most women look, I'm one of those women, you put that general body type in a gym, and the muscles she develops are going to shape and give her the curve she wants. Whether she knows it or not, she wants the muscles. She just doesn't know it yet. Leanne Wilson, at 21 years of age, is the youngest competitor. Her natural shape, beautifully enhanced by 18 months of training, makes her a strong competitor in the heavyweight division.
Some 200 miles north of Brisbane, slightly inland from the Sunshine Coast, is the sleepy town of Nambour. It's an extraordinary land, and it has produced an extraordinary woman. Mary Clayton, 37-year-old mother, tow truck operator, champion bodybuilder. The main industry here is sugarcane. This is the sort of country Collie McCulloch wrote about in the Thornbirds. A natural training ground. Because of the physical nature of her work, Mary has a distinct advantage. She is continually in shape. If you're a muscle man and thinking of getting stranded in the cane fields, a word of advice. I don't particularly like muscle men, I'm afraid. Um, just good looking guys with a good bodies, not necessarily big ones, just not big bodies, just nice shape, I think. Muscles don't really turn me on the guy. But as you can imagine, Mary's muscles do get quite a reaction from passing motorists. Well, some men sort of make a few remarks, but um, I think they'll look good, what the hell. I think I look as good as the other women who were 20 years younger. When Mary was 20 years younger and married Bill Clayton, neither would have believed that in later years she would be standing on stage presenting her body to the world. Bill has his own ideas on what makes his wife a champion. My wife is a typical migrant girl born in Australia and her father believed that she should work hard. She worked hard. She carried wood and she cut wood exceptionally well. That was her life. And she did it well. And I married her to save her from all that degradation. <laughs> Yes. Being a mother and nearing 40 did not deter Mary from entering the Gold Coast titles. She in fact beat the younger competitors and won the coveted title. And as Miss Gold Coast, a chance to compete in the Australian Championships. A relative newcomer to major contests, Mary was apprehensive. She knew her competition was formidable. I have seen Pam Wilkins. And I think she has great shape, but the muscularity isn't there, I don't think. And Beth Lopez looks good, and um, she'd be you know, good competition for me. And Susie Martin as well, I think she looks great.
How do I feel about posing? Very nervous. There are three rounds of judging. In round one, the contestants are relaxed and unflexed. In round two, they are compared in set poses. to a number 35 in front of me. Right leg extended to the side, front double bicep. And relax. Turn right to the rear. 
right leg extended to the side, back double bicep and strike. Relax. Thank you, ladies. Core turn to the right. Right leg extended to the side. Back double bicep and strike. And relax. Thank you, ladies. 25 and 26 for the judge at the end. Turn to the back. Right leg extended to the side. Back double bicep. So it's a strike. Arms overhead, right leg extends to the front, and an out shot, please. Erica Giesen, 27 years old, a mother of two. After training for 18 months, she already holds the Miss South Pacific and Miss Asia titles. Dell also has two children. She enters this contest as Miss Central Coast, which is a tourist resort about 100 miles north of Sydney. For a woman, Leanne shows extraordinary muscular development.
Susie Martin, 24 years of age from Rockhampton in northern Queensland. A surprise entrant and a strong contender in the lightweight division. But the one the fans have been waiting to see is a bodybuilding champion in any category. Gail Laurie. about bodybuilding but as far as potential goes go for it Australian women have it ultimately six finalists are chosen three from each weight division they have one last chance to prove who is the best it is the pose down Pam Wilkins third place Lightweight division. Leanne Wilson, third place, heavyweight division. Beth Lopez. Second place, lightweight division.
Wendy Matheson, second place, heavyweight division. Susie Martin, first place, lightweight division. And overall winner, Gail Laurie, Australian women's bodybuilding champion, the best in Australia.